I actually found this Houdini tutorial one day and I liked it so much that I said let's bring it to Blender and I made a beginner tutorial out of it because it's surprisingly easy and uses some of the best new functionalities in Blender 3.2 which are of course very secret so you have to watch till the end, right? To make this ball we first are gonna add a ball, right? So let's delete everything that we have in the scene. Let's add an icosphere, right? We're gonna add some subdivisions for it. Now the simulation works in a way that we have an emitter in the center and a collision object object as the border so we have already the collision object set up so let's call this one um collision shade it's also smooth with right clicking and let's uh, let's duplicate this with shift d and scale it all the way down so in the center we have an emitter object and i'm also going to name this one emitter now we have the emitter selected and let's go to the particle settings here and let's add the particle system for this emitter so if you play this right we see some things happening like that and this is not very good because well, we cannot see inside the collision object and it's not reacting to the collision object. So for this to work, what we need is to first, let's make the collision like visible, right? So, uh, or that we can see through by going to viewport display under this uh, object properties here and make this a bound object. Like we only display the bounds of this object. And we also make this a collision object. So we go under physics settings and go collision, right? And now if you play this, you see we have I mean, it's better, it's better than it was before, but the particles are way too big, right? Uh, so let's select the emitter object because there we have the particle system, right? You're probably seeing that it gets really hard to like switch between the collision emitter or all that stuff. So let's do so that we are adding a new window by dragging to this side and we're gonna select properties here and let's pin the particle system here. Now the particle system is always here, but if you select like different objects and stuff, this object is gonna be here, right? So let's change the size of those by going under viewboard display in the particle settings and dragging this until they are pretty, pretty small. I mean, it still doesn't look good. The reason is that they fall down, right? And that's because of gravity. So under field weights, we can turn down the gravity and it turns to something like that, right? The bounce back. I don't like that they move like that, so I'm gonna just turn down the velocity, the normal velocity to zero, right? Normal velocity means, for example, if you have like a shape like that, then the normals are coming under this direction, and this is also the direction into which one we are gonna give the speed of the particles. Right now this is zero, and before it was one, and this was the reason why they were moving like that. But now this is zero, and they just appear here, and I even don't like that. So by setting the uh, emission frame end to also one, they all appear on the first frame and this makes the simulation look a bit better, at least through my testing, and I made quite a few of those. If you play, nothing happens, this is good, we can start working on this. To give this random, like, swirly, whatever, movement to those particles, what we need is a turbulent force field. So a turbulent force field, um, we add this here, right, with Shift A, and if you play this now, absolutely nothing for some reason. Well some strange things have happened. Well, sometimes particles in Blender don't work too well. So what we can do is just change the number, any parameter here to like update this. So I just increase the number of particles a bit. And now you see it does work and it disappears after a certain time again. It disappears because the lifetime of the particles is 50 frames. So they don't have time to do anything before they die. Now I don't like this and you probably also not. So let's turn this to 200, right? And our timeline has the time span of 250 frames so i'm going to decrease this to 200 frames so let's see how this works right now uh, if we play this it does something like that you know it looks more interesting i think but it still is not very nicely visible so what we can do is to increase the number of particles so let's put 50,000 here as you see it doesn't look exactly nice i mean this is a big flat like a pancake or something like that and we need more like more detail here so how do we add this well we have this turbulent force field selected we can go to its uh, physics properties now the turbulent force field is basically a noise in the world space right it gives particles directions so for example if the particle like moves it gets the direction okay i'm gonna move like up then after a certain time i'm gonna move down then i'm gonna move up like again or maybe back now if you change the size of the turbulent force field it's gonna like get those directions much 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 quicker which means we're gonna get more detail out of our uh, force field so let's change the size to 0 
2, go back to the first frame with shift left arrow and let's play this again. Well, you see now this is definitely more detailed. There are things that are missing here and one of these things is that first, of course, those particles are bouncing back from the side here and they are doing this like very aggressively which means they're going to do this like forever so the energy doesn't get lost and this kind of looks a bit bad and gets really messy if you play this a bit more i mean they it gets pretty pretty random here and just a big mess so uh to help to solve this problem uh, what we can uh, tick here is the absorption which means uh the force gets absorbed after uh collision objects so we enable this and also we are going to enable some flow for about two. Now flow is basically just air resistance. So the particles, when they get the force, they don't move like forever, but they move a certain time and then they slow down. And now you see the flow has been enabled and it looks, you know, I, I can understand that the particles have a really hard time moving through the air. And this is not what we want. I mean, it works, but it just is a bit too weak. So now the strength of the force field doesn't have any power to actually push <laughs> doesn't have any strength to actually push them through the uh, dense air. So we're going to increase this to 5. And you see it's going to be a lot, 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 lot better. It does look for about the same as it was before. But we don't see the true effect of this flow yet because we are having so big particles right now. So let's take the um, viewer display even more down. And you see, right, if this is one millimeter, we can really start to understand these nice patterns that appear here in the center. I played the simulation until the end and you see it looks, I mean, it looks okay, but the Houdini one has actually like a, like a small like cage or like this little like thin film of particles around itself. And that's, this is something we can do with uh, stickiness. So if you have the collision selected and we go under the physics settings, we can basically um, increase the stickiness to 10 so the particles get sticked very quite a lot and let's also increase the permeability to like maybe five percent so some of the particles get through the object and form some interesting patterns i think even maybe six percent might be okay and if you now play this again you can see that we have this kind of like a thin film around the thing and we also have some things in the air um around the flow and stuff so this is something pretty pretty nice now what we have to do is to get to the final simulation so no uh, okay i'm having some speaking problems so how is this gonna work right so the final simulation we will do it like that we're gonna create one simulation with a million particles right and we're gonna create then uh, three different like a bit different versions of it and we're gonna layer them together with geometry nodes so this is gonna be pretty exciting right these are, I believe, called wedges in Houdini, like different versions of the same system. Let's add one million particles here and move to the first frame when we do this. And let's also save our file before we do this. And let's add one million uh, particles like that and press play. Now this will take a certain time, so I'm gonna make a little pause. I'm gonna go away and when this is done, I'm gonna come back, right? Now we could actually make a sponsor break instead. I think you heard that we are gonna use geometry nodes to make them look better. Now, if you hear geometry nodes and you're gonna like freak out because of them, I understand you, it can be complicated, but I think our sponsor might help you, which is Skillshare, right? So on Skillshare, I have a course on geometry nodes. This class will teach you the fundamentals behind geometry nodes. And once you're finished, there is a whole world of classes on Skillshare waiting for you about graphic design, character design, concept art. I use it to learn creative things I'd like to know more about, such as YouTube storytelling by Thomas Daher, and sometimes completely new things as well. I'm pretty sure this is the best learning platform for all sorts of creative people. And you can access all of this for free because the first 1000 people to use the link in the description will get the one month free trial of Skillshare. See you there. So the simulation is ready. This is the first version of the simulation. As, it, as you see, it looks pretty interesting, right? Now, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to select the emitter, right? And I'm going to go to File, um, Export, uh, Alembic, and export this to like, let's make a folder like called Wedges, version A.abc. Select only selected objects, which is the emitter, right? Make sure export particles is selected and anything else can be the same and press export. So it has exported and the file size is 2.8 gigabytes, which is completely normal for 1 million particles. And now we're going to make the second wedge, which means we're going to go to the first frame, uh, select the turbulent force field and press double R and just move it like 
to a very different location, like rotation, I mean, and change the size a little bit to like point, for example, 1.8, 0 0.18, and the flow to, for example, 2.2, and the strength to, I mean, for example, 4.9. We just randomized the parameters a little bit, and now it's just time to rebake the simulation. So now the second version is ready and we do the exact same thing. We select the emitter object, right? Make sure it is selected. And we go to export, alembic, and under wedges, we make this uh, wedge B uh, dot AVC, right? Uh, like that. And particles, everything like that, we export it. All right, now that the two wedges are done, let's go to import alembic under wedges. Let's import the first one uh, into our scene. Let's delete the cube and also now if you play this you see we have some black things flying around which are our particles but instead of a particle we have one vertex which is how alembic imports particles now let's delete the sphere here we don't need this and let's also import the second alembic which is the alembic version b uh, let's put this to like somewhere here it's frame and delete the sphere also now this is our simulation does this look good no so how do you make this better uh well now, there are two versions, like if you have Blender 3.3 or 3.2. I'm going to use 3.3 because this allows me to get motion blur while rendering the simulation, which is really, really good. Let's add a new tab here, right? And let's switch to Geometry Node Editor. And uh, let's also rename our uh, first one to A and our second one to B. And now let's add a random object to the scene and let's hide those A and B things. Like for example, this can be a monkey. I mean, it doesn't matter too much. And now if you have Blender 3.3, you can do so that you're gonna convert this to a point cloud object. And now you see this monkey has turned into points and this is very important, right? Because there is a huge difference between a point and a vertex in uh, Blender logic. But I'm gonna explain this in a minute. First, let's add a set of geometry nodes here, right? Disconnect this monkey from the output, right? And we don't have any more monkey. We're even gonna delete the input. So what is the point of having this monkey? Well, now we can drag in the A and the B simulations, right? And if you, for example, put the A into the group output, we can see the simulation is here, right? Put the B to the output, we see the B, B version of the simulation, right? We join those together, right? Join geometry, and we join the simulations together and output them at the same time. Now, this is pretty nice and all, but this is exactly the same thing that we had before. So why is this better? Well, now we can do so that we add a mesh to points node. Points, these are now points. So... What is the difference between a point and a vertex? If you now render using cycles, if you render vertices, you don't see absolutely anything. Make them points, right? And this creates an infinite resolution sphere on each of those points. So, I mean, this is not a polygon sphere, so it doesn't use any VRAM or stuff. It is very efficient and very quick, unlike most of uh, particle tutorials you probably have seen so far, which use real spheres or like some cones or stuff on those uh, things, which is very inefficient and very slow. So we are gonna use those spheres here, which is the only way because we have like 2 million particles here. I mean, these are a bit too big, so let's uh, put the radius to like 0 0.01 for now. Uh, but the problem is it doesn't have a nice amount of detail in my opinion. You see, I mean, what is that? Is this some kind of a nice professional looking simulation? No, of course not. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna add a set position node and we're gonna like, how to say this, uh, tame this? No, the thing that you do with trees, you know, when they are messy, I don't know what the word is, but basically we can do so that we connect the noise texture into the offset and we can basically make this all very noisy. Now, of course, this is a very bad look. And we have also a larger problem, which is the fact that, you know, when I enable the set position with M key, you know, this shifts up, right, on all the axes, exactly 0 0.5. What is the reason? Well, the noise texture has a range from 0 to 1, so the average is 0 0.5, which means it's going to move up on all the axes by 0 0.5, which is literally, I say this every tutorial, uh, so it's like a little mantra I'm saying all the time. So we're going to subtract 0 0.5 from it, and now this doesn't move up anymore, unlike without the subtraction, it does move, right? It's not a huge deal, but, you know, it's nice to do things the correct way. And now it's just time to like change the scale to something that is actually reasonable. Two point something is okay, but it's a bit too strong. So what I can do is I can add another vector math here and 
change this to scale and scale this vector to like down by two. And now we have more detail here. It's the question of adding the material now. Uh, let's do so that we add a set a material in the end here, right? And let's select the material that we already have in the scene and everybody has in the scene, which is the material. And let's go do to shader editor, right? And let's select the material that we had here, the material which will be called like orb or something like that. And the nodes are here. We don't need the principal BSDF. We only need the emission shader, which is also very efficient to render. So this is going to be like the efficiency masterclass here. Right. So if you render this right now, what you see, it's white, like it's, it's pretty bad. So I'm going to make the world a dark. It doesn't change. That's because I have scene world turned off, but I'm going to turn this on. Right. And I'm also going to turn off the overlays. So now this is just a big white blob here. I don't like this too much. Well, the reason is that the spheres are too large, obviously. I mean, this doesn't look like a too nice of a particle simulation. So let's go do geometry nodes for a moment. And let's turn the radius down to 0 0.0. Let's call this 2 millimeters, like that. Well, now this is what I'm talking about, right? This does look definitely better than it was before. And it looks very smoky and nice and really high quality, in my opinion. Let's go to the last frame of our simulation and render this right this is our orb looks pretty good uh, even right now without any materials right but we are gonna make this a lot better so so the first thing i want to change is the color of this sphere right you can change the color here is this going to look nice no we need a gradient so how do we get the gradient from the center of this uh, orb to the edge well for that we have a thing called texture coordinates right which are going to give us object coordinates so what are the object coordinates they are basically just telling us in which quadrant do the points lie from the uh, center of the object, right? From this little yellow dot here, this is where the quadrant uh, center will be. And this just happens to be the world origin also. But if I move this object, for example, I mean, this moves around, of course. So we can use this center point and this information that we have to calculate how far away is each point from the center using the vector math, right? So length, this gives us a value for each point, how far it is from the center. So this means the points on the edge are going to be much, much, much uh, brighter than the ones in the center. But we don't see too much of an effect here. And even if I add a color ramp, right, which usually, which usually is added to add some contrast, I mean, it doesn't do too much. Maybe in the center, uh, you can see like, there is something changing here, but this is very little. The reason is that this color ramp here only operates on the range of 0 to 1, but our sphere is 10.8 to something. So, I mean, we have to divide our range with 10 to get this to 1 again, right? So let's divide this, or is it was maybe 11, something like that. And now let's see how the color ramp works. If we drag them like that, well, you see it does work just until the end of the thing. And now we can change the colors using this ramp. So I'm going to put the mission afterwards. This is how the nodes are currently looking. I tend to choose something yellow or at least uh, five times I've been practicing this tutorial. So something uh, like that, I think, and also something green. So. This can be this can be cool, I think, right? And you can also make sure the saturation is maybe a little bit lower in the center. And the cool trick is that you can use HSV interpolation. What is this hue, saturation, and value, right? So you don't see any difference right now. But for example, if I change this to, uh, I don't know, like red or is this one, you see it doesn't interpolate like linearly, but it does it through the color wheel. So for example, uh, if I have something really opposite, you see, we do have some uh, color color gradients happening here instead of this boring RGB. So keep this in mind. You can get some pretty cool results with that. But I think this looks okay for now. It doesn't look too good, right? But the reason is the strength of the mission is very, very small. Let's maybe use like you know, maybe 20. And I think the points might be a bit too large. So I'm going to go to Geometry Node Editor and I'm going to make the points twice as small with a one millimeter. I think this already looks a bit better than it uh, was before. Now what I want to do is to make the edges of this sphere more transparent than the center of this sphere. And that's because I just want to get the focus of your eye more in the center, which is basically how all great artworks work. They have more color, more brightness, more everything in the center or in the point of interest. So 
uh, we can mix between, for example, uh, a transparent shader, a transparent PSDF, and an emission shader. So if I turn the mix shader value to zero, we only get emission. If it is one, we get only transparency. So white value means transparency and black value zero means emission. So now I'm going to use the exact same division thing here, gradient from the center to control this. So as you remember, black means emission in our case. So I'm going to increase this to like maybe that center, right? I'm going to plug this into the mix shader. And now this is a bit maybe too strong in my opinion. So I'm going to switch this also to ease to make this a bit more like smooth. Maybe turn this white area down to 0 0.5. So this isn't as strong of a like loss of energy there. This is before, this is after. I think this adds more like eyeballs to the center of this thing. And I also want to make this stronger in the center. And I can use the exact same chlor ramp technique for this one, except this time there will be some math involved. As you see, uh, this is something I can use to change the strength, right? So if I want to make this like very weak in the center, well, I can do this like that. I want to make it strong in the center and weak at the edges, something like uh, that. And uh, now if I plug this into the mission, this will be a disaster because, uh, I mean, this is very, very weak right now. The reason is that our current strength is 20 and this one here, oh, sorry, this one here outputs uh, 0 to 1. So let's add a math node and let's multiply this by at least 20. Can be more, doesn't matter, but just a big number, right? That matches the one here. And let's plug this here right now. Now this is, of course, I mean, it gets strong in the center, but very weak in the edges. I don't like this so much. I'm going to make the edges like 0 0.5. Uh, so they actually have some strength, but not as much as they had before. So this was the first result and this is the processed result. I think this one looks quite a bit better, but now we can do so that um, we also add a hue saturation node here so that we can, for example, change the hue to something that we like more. For example, I like uh, maybe... Yeah, I think this is a pretty cool result for this little easy simulation that we did. Now it's time to render this out. So go to cycle settings, right, and enable motion blur with the shutter of 0 0.5. So this is the final result. And if you want to get the project file and the Alembics, this is on Patreon together with a tutorial about how to create effects like that. So see you on Patreon, check this out, some nice stuff there, and uh, see you next time.